Good day, Mr. Israel. Could you please do a focused upper limb motor examination? Good morning, ma'am. How are you? Good, good. My name is Israel Shingenge. I'm a fourth year medical student. I've been asked by a doctor to do a motor exam. It will involve me looking at you, touching you, and perhaps telling you to do some comments. Is it okay with you? All right. So when we start the motor exam, of the, could, you, could I just ask you to put your hair a bit behind and show me your hand? Okay. Look at both hands. Okay. So you want to see, is there any obvious scar? Okay. I can appreciate a scar just on the media aspect of the hand okay on the left okay otherwise i do not appreciate any other significant scars i can see any scars okay are you seeing any obvious involuntary movement i cannot see are you appreciating any obvious wasting remember wasting is always a bit tricky if it's generalized it's sort of a cachexic sort of uh, picture so you can't really post that to a lower motor but if you the key to wasting is you compare both sides okay if you're seeing obvious localized uh, wasting on one side as opposed to the other one that typically shows you that they maybe are dealing with a lower motor pattern of of lesion and this is just an addition so while you're inspecting for your muscle uh, wasting it's very important not just to concentrate on the half full arm but also on your hand okay you get small muscle wasting here and it's very important to compare it so this is what we call the thinner muscles okay the thinner aspect of the hand and this is your hypothenar okay so what you want to do is to feel the muscle back and compare it you might appear that you have more atrophy on on one side as opposed to the other one then you come to your hypothenar again you want to feel does it feel the same on both sides okay as we are seeing this is we are feeling the same okay Okay. Then on the dorsum aspect, you want to look here exactly where I'm pointing. Here's where you pick up what you call guttering. Again, it's a sign of small muscle wasting. Okay. And finally, just this area, you typically get a lot of wasting where you have your brevis here. Okay. Again, we are not appreciating any obvious uh, atrophy. Yeah. Is there any obvious fasciculation? Remember, fasciculation can be spontaneous. You can see them, or you can induce them by twitching which we cannot see. Okay. We cannot see any obvious involuntary movement, such as chorea or a tremor. Remember, a tremor means it's very regular. It's typically having a very regular, as opposed to things like chorea, where there are this chorea thetoid movement that may not be so uh, uh, symmetric and also not really regular, as opposed to a tremor, okay? which we do not appreciate here. So inspection is very, very important. The second thing that you may inspect for, you might find a patient with an obvious abnormal posture. The most common posture you find is the patient has the shoulder is adducted, so it's inward. You see the elbow is flexed. Okay, you see the the wrist is also flexed, and typically your fingers are flexed like that. Okay, this is what we call. Remember, all the things that we're talking about are flexors. So the flexors are so strong as opposed to the extensors, and we call it an upper motor neuron pattern of weakness, okay? So when you see that, you already know that I'm localizing my problem to upper motor, okay? So that's very useful just from inspection to pick up such subtle things, okay? Then the next thing that we'll move on to is to tone. Ma'am, do you have any pain in your joint? Any? All right, okay? Remember... Tone, there are two types of tone. Okay, tone can be increased or decreased. Remember, if it's increased, it can be spastic or it can be rigid. Okay, remember, spasticity is typically velocity dependent. Okay, and it's typically very much associated with weakness as opposed to rigidity where tone is just increased. However, it's, it's not usually uh, including weakness as part of it. And remember also, rigidity can be cogwheel rigidity or you have... Uh, lead pipe rigidity. Again, those are all things that you can pick up. Okay, so for when you are testing for tone, especially to pick up spasticity, remember you start in your pronation to supination movement. So we call it a pronation to supination movement. So you go as fast as you can, but don't make it too many times, otherwise, you are just giving physio. Okay, so you do that, that, then extend flexion to extension. Okay, I'll repeat that, that extension to flexion then you immediately do it on the other side to compare remember it's pronation to supination okay one two 
like that so you see i'm doing it very fast and i can appreciate that the tone is normal now having hypotonia is always sometimes very hard you have to examine enough patients to pay to kind of have a feel of what hypotonia is however a useful thing you can do is a patient with hypotonia if i lift him up like that you just sleep exactly how he slept. A normal person will not allow himself just to sleep. He will probably bring it down a bit. But if he sleeps like that, you are thinking is it hypotonic. So that's a useful test that you can do. However, you will have to examine enough patients to pick that up. Okay. Again, we cannot appreciate any obvious rigidity, the normal tone. Then we move on to power. Ma'am, I'm going to ask you just to close your eyes and spread out your hands like that. Okay. Again, this... Okay, just spread them out like that. Again, so what you are looking for, we are doing a pronator drift. This is how you pick up subtle weakness, okay? And this, typically, if the arm is drifting down like that, like in that manner, that's what you call a pronator drift. And it signifies that you are having an upper motor neuron pattern of weakness, which we do not see here. Okay. then you can tell the patient to do that so the patient we know remember let the muscle do the work okay if you want to test for elbow abduction let them abduct it first okay resist my movement okay, okay. again you can tell them to abduct a bit then push against me okay so shoulder abduction shoulder adduction is five over five on both sides okay and then I'm going to ask you to flex your hand okay resist me okay again here okay again we can see that the elbow flexion is five over five on both sides okay and then remember let the muscle do the work and you oppose it and so let the patient extend the elbow first okay just resist me keep it straight okay keep it straight okay Again, we can see elbow extension is 5 over 5 on both sides. And then I'm going to ask you to just do this. Okay. So I will be resisting you. Don't let me push you down. Okay. Okay. Let me push you down. Okay. Another way you can do it is you can. Okay. And then. Okay. Wrist extension, wrist flexion. Okay. So I'm asking you to do this. Okay. Do not let me straighten it. Okay, do not let me straighten it. Okay, a wrist flexion is five over five on both sides. Okay, then we come to the hands. So I'm going to ask you to keep them straight. Don't let me pull, pull them down. Okay, okay, again here. Okay, and then we see again this is finger extension. Okay, it's five over five on both sides. Then I'm going to ask you to clench my hand. Don't let me come out. Don't let me come out. Okay. Clench it, clench it, clench it. Okay. Typically, if the fl finger flexion, which we're uh, testing for now, you are not supposed to come out. Another much more specific way to test for finger flexion, you tell the patient to flex them like that. Then don't let me straighten them. Okay. Don't let me straighten them. Okay. Another useful thing you can do is spread your hands like that. Yeah? You test for finger abduction. Okay. So, okay. Again, okay. Yeah, that marks the end of the motor. Remember, there are other movements you can do. You can do what you call, especially with the thumb, you can do flexion, extension, abduction, adduction, like that. There are other subtle things that you may want to do, depending if you are looking for that. So, starting with reflexes, okay? Remember, I always say in the same rule, use your hand that holds, it holds, and your patella hammer, the one that holds. Don't switch them up, okay? So, you want to start with your bicep, okay? So, you want to feel for the tendon. And remember, I know it's very tempting to be looking at the hand moving, but the examiner must see you looking at the muscle, okay? So, you want, I'm already feeling the tendon, then I hit, okay? I can see the muscle contracting okay then the same the moment you move here you either do that or you do this okay so again you feel the tendon just figure out where you are most comfortable then you hit again i'm seeing the contraction if you want to do it like that you can still do the same although this one the mechanisms are always a bit funny but 
or no, you can still see that. The same hand again holds that. You feel for the tendon, that's always a mark, and you hit. I can see the muscle contracting. In the same way, I hold this hand, I feel for the tendon, and I, and again, it's moving, okay? That's for your triceps, okay? Then, your supinator, your brachioradialis, okay? It's typically on the much more lateral aspect, not in the medial. So, you can put your hand here and do that. Again, you're seeing it contract. Another way, this one you all, always have to put your finger, you can just hit, okay? You can just hit. Again, that's something you can do. And finally, you can do your last reflex. Just do that. Okay. Do that, okay? You typically see a, a slight flexion of the fingers, okay? Again, reflexes help you. Reflexes can be zero which is absent one which is reduced two plus which is normal three plus which is brisk and four plus is typically associated with clonus okay which uh, you have to elicit it's very important to add that hyperreflexia on its own okay without any other features weakness or any other sensation problem it doesn't really mean much, okay? Because if someone is anxious, especially young patients, they are typically very anxious. Of course, their reflexes will seem to be very brisk, okay? But it may just be because of the anxiety, okay? So you have to put all the signs together and find a pattern. Neurology is always about pattern. Again, if you feel like maybe the patient is generating the, 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 the reflexes itself, which is possible, you can always try to go to non-normal places that you go for reflexes. Typical, this is a common place. You just hit there and you hit there. Again, you will see that it's much more exaggerated if it's a true hyperreflexia. That marks the end of the motto exam.